Hello everybody, I hope you guys are enjoying your day. Today we're going to be looking at your January 2020 forecast, which is going to include your temperature anomalies, your precipitation anomalies, and then also your overall forecast at the end, where uh, you can see where uh, what your region is expecting uh, as a whole for this uh, month. Uh, and we're going to be looking at all those different factors and kind of putting them all into one video. So I hope you guys uh, do enjoy. If you do, then uh, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And on. also, uh, if you do think that somebody uh, that you know will enjoy this type of content, be sure to share it with your friends and family. Anyways, we are going to get right into the video here, and we're going to start off with your precipitation forecast. So we have below average uh, conditions, slightly below average here. So it's not going to be too noticeable if you are in this lightest shade of brown. Uh, that's going to be over northern California, northern Nevada, most of Oregon and Washington. Uh, but then as we add our next layer of uh, kind of an orange or a darker brown, you're going to be seeing over Northern California, especially the coastal areas of Oregon and Washington, you're going to be seeing your moderately below average conditions. Uh, and this going through all of January, so from the 1st to the 31st, you should be fairly dry. And this is be going to be because we're gonna, you're not going to have this uh, kind of fire hose jet that you would uh, want to see if you want uh, above average conditions over parts of the West uh, and the Northwest especially. Uh, but we're going to actually have this subtropical jet stream kind of be active and this uh fire hose jet uh, the pacific fire hose jet it's not going to be active so you're going to be seeing a lot of below average conditions over the northwest while you are going to have a lot of above average conditions and potential for more nor'easters especially over the east coast uh mainly because you are going to have that influx of moisture coming in and then also you have that supply from the uh from the gulf now we're going to add your uh, slightly above average layer here and this is all the areas in this light green and this is stretching all the way from montana and the dakotas southward into the great lakes and then into the northeast mid-atlantic southeast and then stretching back across the west through the south central u.s and the southwestern most u.s uh, and this includes um most most of Arizona, most of New Mexico, most of Texas, and really all of these areas shaded in this light green will be seeing a slightly above average January. And this is going to be in the form of rain or snow. Uh, this is just precipitation, so not rainfall necessarily. But if you are, of course, further south or if you are in a lower lying area that n normally doesn't see snowfall, uh, then mainly, mainly this will be in the form of rainfall. And uh, if you do usually see snowfall, uh, then this could cause late especially once we get into our temperature forecast with some above average snowfall uh, so uh, kind of have to mix the two together to see whether your area will be seeing an above average snowfall uh, for January or not now here's your second shade of green and again the increase of nor'easters uh, because of this Pacific jet stream this subtropical jet stream being active uh, it's gonna lead to above average precipitation over Southern California Arizona New Mexico and then also Southern Texas and then as well as the East Coast will be seeing those above average conditions the Gulf will be active during this time your temperatures in the your water temperatures pretty uh, pretty uh, not too uh, cold uh, and that will support some storms moving along the coast so potential for some snowstorms uh, potential for some rainstorms also are all uh, all possibilities here and uh, now that's going to lead us into our temperature forecast for uh, January of 2020 and here's anywhere in this light blue this is your slightly below average area and this is stretching all the way from the west coast to the east coast but really mainly for the northeast so basically from the northeast Great Lakes uh, and the central U.S. and then into the western U.S. including the Rockies and the northwest you're all going to be in the slightly below average area now as we do add our next layer uh, and your our final layer for below average uh, we have three areas we have one for the northeast the interior most northeast we also have another one for the great lakes so for michigan uh wisconsin illinois iowa uh, minnesota north uh, south dakota and nebraska kansas and northern missouri all these areas will be seeing moderately below average uh conditions and then as well as the rockies especially the central rockies and the southern rockies uh you'll all be seeing some uh, moderately below average conditions. And this will correlate with some snowfall, of course, when you have that 
increased uh, precipitation and you have those cooler temperatures, you're going to have some snowstorms. So that's pretty much uh, a given with January. Of course, you're going to see snowstorms over uh, much of these areas uh, and especially uh, those areas that saw those above average conditions as far as uh, precipitation. So I'll kind of outline it again for you. So basically, uh, it was kind of like this area that was seeing above average, anywhere to the east of this was seeing above average for the most part. Uh, so if you are in this below average and you are seeing uh, higher than normal precipitation, you have a pretty good shot of seeing some uh, snowfall, of course, that if, if you are very far south or if you are in a lower lying area then you might not see snowfall but you have an increased chance at least of seeing snowfall now here uh, uh, we have one layer of above average and this can be your slightly above average or southernmost texas and the southern half of uh, florida you're going to be really st you're not going to be in any of those cold dips those cold dips from the arctic aren't going to be able to reach that far south it looks like uh, you will have a couple days below average and you will have a couple of days above average but generally there will be a couple more days that are above average tilting you uh, uh slightly above average um but that isn't to say that you can't have cold shots in those areas just on paper it should be above average now we are going to get into your overall winter forecast or not winter forecast your january forecast for 2020 and we're going to kind of unveil what each layer or each color means on this map now we'll start from west to east you see over the uh, northwest you're going to be seeing abnormally dry conditions so usually you expect some pretty uh, wet conditions over the northwest but you are going to be fairly dry maybe uh, weeks at a time of dry conditions um, may, more like five days or so with uh, without any rainfall but it is going to be fairly dry probably a couple inches below average uh, or even a few inches below average by the time this uh, January has kind of finished uh, but generally, in, if you are in this brown shade from Nevada, California, and northward into Oregon and Washington, especially the western half of those states, uh, you'll be seeing some abnormally dry conditions overall. Now, over the southwest, we're going to have the opposite. opposite. We're going to have the wet conditions where you're going to be seeing that Pacific jet stream uh, or that subtropical jet stream uh, move through, and that's going to lead to a couple storms over these areas. And that it doesn't take a lot to bring you guys above average. So I'm not saying every day is going to be above average uh, or uh, raining or snowing, depending on your elevation. Uh, but a lot of a lot of these days will be uh, some sort of precipitation and it doesn't take again it doesn't take a lot for you guys to be above average maybe just a couple of inches throughout the entire month or uh, or entire winter will bring you above average now here in this next layer this is your average mountain snow and this is going to be over parts uh, really the Rocky Mountains and anywhere highlighted in here is going to be seeing most likely snowfall and then also it's going to be fairly average so not expecting too dry conditions we're not going to be seeing a lot of storms necessarily moving through but you will have some fairly average conditions in the higher elevations now here in this uh blue shade this there's two shades really uh and this also cuts through this uh purple area uh we'll uncover what that uh stands for later but uh we have multiple clippers over parts of Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, and northernmost Nebraska, and then also another area for northern Indiana and northern Ohio, and also for Michigan. Really, uh, I'm going to outline the areas that are going to be seeing clippers because it is a bit de deceiving here. Really, if you live in this area and to the north, you're going to be seeing clippers most likely. Uh, but there are some a bit a bit more notable things that are going to be going on. So kind of the clippers is kind of going to be on the bottom here of the uh, kind of things that that are going to be mentioned on this uh, on this map. So uh, of course, as we unveil these things, you'll be uh, seeing what these uh, stand for now. We have cooler conditions here for uh, parts of the southwest and then also kind of moving into the central plains. You're going to be seeing cooler conditions, a bit cooler than average, so not too uh, noticeably cool. But uh, really, it'll be a bit cooler on paper, not really, uh, not too noticeable though. Now, we are going to have some frequent, frequent Arctic, Arctic attack uh, or visits here uh, over parts of the north central U.S. And this includes Minnesota, the Dakotas, into Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. Wisconsin all these areas will be seeing some arctic uh, visits and I thought that was a bit more notable than the clippers so I put that above it but you will still be seeing some clippers and snowstorms as well now 
cooler late in the month for parts uh, in these blue areas. So really the central and south central U.S., uh, even, yeah, even stretching into the south central U.S., seeing some cooler conditions late in the month. It's going to be warm early in the month, but late, uh, cooler uh, later in the month. And then as we add our next layer, more lake effect early on. You're going to have the lake effect machines kind of turned on early on in the in the month. And then later on, as it gets colder, the lakes start to freeze a little bit more. You will kind of have a uh, kind of see a, a kind of a downward spiral as far as uh, lake effect goes. But that happens every year as the lakes uh, freeze over, uh, you will of course be seeing less lake effect there's less moisture to work with uh so that's pretty much a given you're going to be seeing more lake effect early on in the season or early on in the month now we are we are going to have average conditions in this gray area so nothing really too notable to point out if you do live in this gray area spanning from texas all the way up into ohio and indiana now we are going to have lots of storms over uh, in this green area from texas up through louisiana mississippi alabama and then up through the gulf states uh and into the southeast and then into all the way up into Virginia you're going to be seeing lots of storms so this could be in the form of rain or snow you can't really forecast whether it's going to be uh, in the form of rain or snow uh, especially farther south it's harder to point to pinpoint if you are going to see a snowstorm late uh, kind of uh, farther on in the time period uh, so we are just going to say storm. So this could be in the form of rain or snow. Most of them will be in the form of rain. Uh, but a couple, I can't rule it out that you will see some snowstorms over these areas. Uh, and it's really, as you see these nor'easters track up, you'll be seeing rain on the back side or kind of uh, to the east, uh, to the west of it. And then on the northwest side is usually where you see your snowfall. Now, as we get at our next layer, your warm conditions are going to be over the south, uh, the southern part of uh, Texas, and then also the southern part of. Uh, Florida, really the same areas that saw slightly above average conditions. It's not going to be too noticeable, but you will stay in the 60s or 70s, especially because these areas average a pretty high uh, temperature uh, compared to the rest of the nation. Now, we are going to add our next layer, multiple big uh, snowstorms over parts of the interior and northeast, stretching down into the Appalachian Mountains uh, and in this red, uh, red area. Now, you're going to have a couple of snowstorms most likely uh, kind of move through. And it doesn't really matter the snow, uh, the track of the storm. So this storm could go out to sea. It could go a bit more inland. But most of the time, these areas will get some uh, snow out of these systems. Uh, and in a lot of cases, it is significant. Unless, of course, the system kind of goes all the way out to sea. Or it really doesn't. Uh, it's too far off to see that you can't even bring snow to these areas. But for the most part, you will be seeing a lot of big snowstorms and some could deliver over two feet of snowfall uh, and that's definitely not out of the question and then finally our final layer here uh some coastal snowstorms over anywhere from virginia maryland delaware uh up through pennsylvania new jersey uh southern upstate new york and long island and then into connecticut uh rhode island massachusetts new hampshire and maine uh all these areas could see some coastal storms develop especially once you get into southern new england or uh, actually Actually, most of New England, uh, really the Mid-Atlantic uh, and uh, areas like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Long Island, it takes a lot more for you guys to get snowfall. So uh, a couple of snowstorms could uh, definitely come out uh, here, but uh, definitely I'm not expecting uh, like 30 inches out of this one month, but you will be seeing a lot of snowfall out of uh, a couple of systems. I, I definitely think that is a possibility. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications so you never miss a video when I upload. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, that was Eli the Weather Guy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.